Gaza's 2.3 million civilians faced a continuing struggle for food, water and safety on Sunday and braced for a looming Israeli invasion. Nine days after Hamas militants launched a deadly assault on Israel, while hundreds of thousands sought to heed Israel's order to evacuate the north, others huddled at hospitals there. Israeli forces, supported by a growing deployment of U.S. warships in the region, positioned themselves along Gaza's border and drilled for what Israel said would be a broad campaign to dismantle the militant group. A week of blistering airstrikes have demolished entire neighborhoods but failed to stem militant rocket fire into Israel. The Gaza Health Ministry said 2,450 Palestinians have been killed since the fighting erupted more than in the 2014 Gaza war, which lasted over six weeks. That makes this the deadliest of the five Gaza wars for both sides. More than 1,400 Israelis have been killed, the vast majority of them civilians killed in Hamas' October 7 assault. This is the deadliest war for Israel since 1973 conflict with Egypt and Syria. Julie Sunday, the Assistant Deputy Minister for Counselor Security and Emergency Management at Global Affairs Canada, confirmed on Sunday that a fifth Canadian is among those killed during the violence and three others remain missing. She told a media briefing in Orva without providing any details that it's an extremely tragic outcome. She said, our thoughts are with the families in all of these cases and we are very focused on addressing the cases of the three missing persons who we continue to try to locate and bring back to safety in Canada. Yesterday, Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolly said the federal government is still working to get Canadians out of the besieged Gaza Strip as the Palestinian territory braces for an expected ground invasion by Israel. Jolly announced your plan to begin evacuating Canadians from the West Bank territory by bus as early as next week. She said Saturday at a news conference from Jordan that we are extremely concerned about the situation in Gaza. Gaza is one of the worst places on earth to be right now. The minister said the Israeli government has authorized Canadians' departure from the territory on Mediterranean Sea, but more work needs to be done to secure their passage. About 160 Canadians and their relatives are still in Gaza, she said. A plan to allow foreign nationals to leave the territory via the border crossing with Egypt fell through earlier Saturday. The Israeli foreign minister announced the cancellation of the plan in a message sent to Western embassies. Jolly said the decision left Canadians stranded in the border city of Rafah. Meanwhile, a new deal between Canada, Jordan, Israel and the Palestinian Authority would allow between 80 and 100 Canadians in the West Bank to depart by bus from the city of Ramallah to the Jordan capital of Amman, Jolly said. Those evacuations are expected to begin Tuesday. Canadians seeking to leave Israel have been able to take military flights from Tel Aviv to Athens. Jolly called for the protection of Israeli and Palestinian civilians as tensions in the region continue to mount after a surprise attack by Hamas across the Israeli border last weekend. Israel has dropped leaflets over Gaza City in the north and renewed warnings on social media, ordering more than one Palestinians, almost half the territory's population, to move south. The military says it's trying to clear away civilians ahead of a major campaign against Hamas militants in the north, including in what it said were underground hideouts in Gaza City. Hamas urged people to stay in their homes. The military said Sunday that it would refrain from targeting a single route south from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., again urging Palestinians to leave the north end Masse. The military offered two corridors and a longer window the day before. The UN and aid groups say such a rapid exodus, along with Israel's complete siege of the 40-kilometer-long coastal territory, would cause untold human suffering. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu convened Israel's expanded emergency cabinet for the first time on Sunday, saying the national unity on display sent a message at home and abroad as the country gears up to demolish Hamas in Gaza. The meeting held in military headquarters in Tel Aviv began with ministers standing for a moment's silence in memory of the 1,300 Israelis killed in Hamas's shock October 7 onslaught, a video released by Netanyahu's office showed. Welcoming former opposition lawyer Benny Gantz, who joined the government along with several ministers of his party last week, Nathan Hayu said all ministers were working around the clock the United Front. He said, Hamas thought that we would be demolished. It is we who will demolish Hamas. 
adding that the show of unity sends a clear message to the nation, the enemy and the world. Iran's hardline president spoke with France's leader on Sunday warning that the war would expand if Israel's siege of Gaza doesn't stop. Ibrahim Raisi and Emmanuel Macron spoke over the phone. The Iranian president made no mention of the unprecedented October 7 incursion by Gaza's militant Hamas group into southern Israel that sparked the latest Hamas-Israel war. Iran has long been a supporter of Hamas. Raisi said the situation will be complicated if the crimes by the Zionist regime, including the killing of people and blockade of Gaza, are not stopped. Macron intended to press the argument that bringing the violence to a rapid end is in everyone's interest, including Iran's, the presidential office said. France feels that Iran can play a positive role in the crisis by simply not getting involved in it, either with words that are unacceptable or by supporting Hamas. Over the weekend, Raisi spoke with leaders of Arab nations of Iraq, Oman. Ah!